We're flying from Salton Sea to Yucca Valley near Joshua Tree in California. In our flight path lies a rare type of airspace straight out of a past era. This dark solid line wraps around the area around Palm Springs International Airport and is called the Terminal Radar Service Area or TERSA. The airspace system in the U.S. as we've come to learn it is a product of having been standardized into the International Airspace System with classes like the Class D airspace around Towered Palm Springs International. But a TERSA is like the airspace that time forgot. There wasn't an equivalent class of airspace that fit into the international model. The closest thing to a TERSA is Class C airspace, involving terminal radar approach control facilities or a TRACON to help coordinate aircraft for the tower at the primary airport. The big difference is that unlike a Charlie airspace, we're not required to contact approach or anyone flying through a TERSA as long as we stay out of that Delta airspace around Palm Springs. The dimensions are somewhat similar to a Charlie. Here's an outer area between 3,500 and 10,000 feet. There's a small inner shell from 2,000 feet up. Then there's a surface area overlapping the delta and around some areas just outside of it. The aim in chapter 3-5-6 gives us some information about the TERSA. In the first paragraph on background, they tell us that TERSAs don't fit in the traditional A through G airspace classification. The primary airport remains a Class D airport, but everything else in the TERSA reverts to Class E or G depending on the altitude. And so the airspace rules on equipment, entry requirements, and weather minimums for those classes apply. This is kind of interesting. The TERSA is Class E, so we don't need a transponder. But in order to participate in the TERSA and get radar services from approach, we will need to have a transponder so the controller can radar identify us. The participation is voluntary then. We're encouraged to contact approach control and participate in radar services, but it's strictly voluntary. Chapter 4 of the AIM details some air traffic control information for TERSAs. Much like flight following, participating in the TERSA gets us traffic separation from IFR traffic and other VFR traffic participating and workload permitting traffic advisories. ATC won't be able to provide separation services concerning VFR aircraft flying through the TERSA not participating. Again, participation is voluntary, but once in the system, we have to comply with ATC instructions, such as assigned altitudes. If we're assigned an altitude, we'll maintain that until hearing, resume appropriate VFR altitudes. If we aren't assigned an altitude, we should remain at an appropriate VFR altitude. Think east is odd, west is even odder, and should inform ATC of a change in altitude. This is also very similar to flight following. And again, like in flight following, we should let ATC know of our destination, if we're not going to the primary airport and the altitude we want to cruise at. So how do we get in touch with ATC to participate in the TERSA? A Charlie airspace will have approach frequencies printed on the chart, but for a TERSA we need to look to the frequency tab on the edge of the sectional chart. Here we see two frequencies for SoCal approach, one for high and low altitudes. So we're cruising at a VFR altitude of 6,500 on our course to cross through the TERSA en route to Yucca Valley. The TERSA airspace begins a few miles past the northern edge of the Salton Sea below us. We're going to switch over to the approach frequency listed on the sectional for low altitudes, 135.27, and we'll make our initial contact. This will be practically identical to making a flight following request while en route. SoCal approach, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango VFR request. Tango, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango is a Cessna 152, 6,500 feet, approximately 25 miles southeast of Palm Springs International. Going to transition the Tursa at 6,500 inbound to Yucca Valley. Number 518 Foxtrot Tango, Squawk 3654. So we'll put our squawk in the box and wait to be ID'd. Tango, your radar contact, one six miles southeast of the thermal VOR, the Palm Springs altimeter 2995. 2995, 518 Foxtrot Tango. So we're now a participating aircraft. Approach may assign us a heading or an altitude, but here we're good at our original cruise altitude of 6,500 feet. Any traffic advisories would be provided to us on a workload permitting basis. Depending on how busy the airspace is, the controller may hand us off to another frequency as we transition the TERSA. 
which would sound just like a normal handoff. November 5, Foxtrot Tango, contact SoCal approach 126.7. 126.7, 518 Foxtrot Tango. SoCal approach, that's the 518 Foxtrot Tango, 6,500 feet. Number 518 Foxtrot Tango, SoCal approach, the Palm Springs altimeter, 2995. 2995, 518 Foxtrot Tango. So we'll stay with this controller for the remainder of our transition to the Tursa. Now, eventually we'll need to climb to stay above that rising terrain. So we'll climb and let ATC know of our change. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango is starting a VFR climb to 8,500. Roger. The Tursa ends roughly where the mountains begin. So as we level off at 8,500, we'll hear ATC telling us we can switch over. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, radar service is terminated, clock VFR, frequency change approved. We'll put 1200 in the transponder and can begin our descent into Yucca Valley. So there's not too much different about a Tursa from what we've already explored. I might summarize it as if it's like getting flight following, only you have to comply with heading and altitude assignments. And it terminates after you leave the Tursa and the controller end services. And we could also think of it like a voluntary class Charlie airspace. We call up approach, just like at a regular Charlie, and let them know what we're doing on a voluntary basis, of course. Departing from or landing at the primary airport can also be thought of as operating in a Charlie. Again, the difference being that arrivals need not call approach, but can call up tower directly if they want. Departing aircraft will be given Tursa services as a default unless they request negative Tursa service or something to that effect when talking to ground control. There's only a few of these Tursa airports left, so they're a bit of an oddball.